Hi, I'm Vibrine Samuels and welcome back to another episode of Soul Stirring Astrology where I give you my texture take on the world of astrology. Well, I'm starting an archetypal sun sign series. Today, the sun actually moves into Scorpio, so I thought, why not explore the signs in a little bit more detail? So Jupiter is also in Scorpio and will be there for the next 13 months. So I think it's quite an appropriate time to be exploring the signs from an archetypal point of view. So when we're dealing with Scorpio, we're in the realm of transformation. And we're seeing the transformation played out in nature because we've got this movement from autumn through to winter. So for the next few months, we're kind of descending into Pluto's world. And Pluto's world is about the underworld. Um, the Greek lord uh, is known as Hades. So we're moving into the underworld, the undergrowth of life, where we're going to be exploring death, transformation and rebirth. And Scorpio uh, starts on October the 23rd, and within the, the season of Scorpio, we have Halloween. So Halloween, as we know, our lovely young children, they dress up, you know, in, as ghosts or spirits and ghouls, and we do the trick and treat. But when we think about where it started, Halloween is actually a contraction of all hallowed eves which is a representation or reflection of the night before All Saints Day, where the souls of saints uh, were being prayed for. Now, there was uh, an ancient sort of uh, mythology and superstition that if people died and they didn't die in a peaceful way, then they would leave their, you know, they'd rise from uh, their coffins and they'd be sort of wandering around in the world in a very restless way. And so the kind of ancient... Uh, superstition has been dropped but this whole kind of celebration of Halloween continues where it's tricking or treating. Now it's set in Scorpio which means that it, it's quite appropriate because uh, it's nocturnal, dark, it, it's lunar looking for the light and it's also funerary. So this sense of you know rising from the dead, rising from the ashes and how we can be that phoenix. Now, Scorpio is raised, uh, ruled by two planets, Pluto as well as Mars. So with Pluto, we've got Hades here, and Hades is beckoning all of us to dive deep. And the kind of issues that we're dealing with um, are, are sort of like jealousy, intensity, you know, compulsive, obsessive behaviours, attachments, um, insecurity. So that's the realm of Hades stroke Pluto. Now with Mars, Mars as the co-ruler, uh, here is far more subtle. It's not that sort of charge forward in the way that when Mars is ruling Aries. Here is the invitation to come within, and Mars shows up within all of us as the inner warrior. And it's the inner warrior that's fighting the ego, that, you know, Mars is there to slay the ego because the soul wants to be released and to come through. And so Mars plays this very pivotal role because uh, we're being challenged to, to psychologically kill off what isn't there and so uh, Mars here will light the fire under the seeds of negativity so it's about um, clearing the path so that we can release negativity in order for the positivity to show up. Now Mars here one has to think about at what level is Mars showing up in your life? Is it showing up in the way whereby the inner warrior, your inner warrior, is fighting your inner demon? So it's a very insular way of dealing with that transformation. Or is it showing up as the external warrior that's fighting others? And so when we're looking at this, it gives us a, a sense of the levels of consciousness in which we're operating in. So when we're looking at Mars, Mars being the co-ruler of the eighth house, Scorpio, Pluto's house, its opposition is Taurus. And so Taurus is ruled by Venus. So when you're looking at um, what does Mars mean in terms of Scorpio, we have to look at this axis um, of, of Mars and Venus. And the theme that comes out here is it's about relationships, but it could also relate to resources, money. And so what can happen is a scenario might present itself in this way. My husband or wife has cheated on me, and so I'm going to take them to the cleaners. I'm going to fight them for every single penny that they have, and I'm going to win. So that's the Pluto way, because Pluto is looking at joint resources in the eighth house. Conversely, if you approach it from the Taurian way, 
my husband or wife has um, had an affair and in fact I'm not going to divorce them, I'm not going to leave them because of my need for financial security but I'm going to withdraw sex and pleasure and I'm going to spend all their money and I'm going to play this tit for tat game. And so Scorpio, the sign of Scorpio, the manifestations of the archetypes show us where we are on our particular journeys. Now when we pivot in uh, Pluto here, so Pluto is possibly being afflicted uh, with Venus and or Mars, what happens here is that it moves into the areas of control and power and manipulation. And with Pluto here, there's this sort of nagging feeling, as, as James Hillman, the psychologist, called it, the haunting voices and the grounding voices. And what he meant by this is this sense of the background conversations that go on in all of our minds that, that throw up insecurities or anxieties when we haven't dealt with ourselves and with Pluto in any house Pluto will show where the doubts and the fears are so for example Pluto in the seventh house here there might be this background conversation that's going on that my husband or my wife is just not good enough mm, what does that mean for me you're seeing Pluto kick in with the power and the control there Pluto in the first house could be this sense that you're feeling a bit of a fraud, you know, the imposter syndrome, where you're thinking, I'm not as powerful as I think I am. So these insecurities can come to the surface. And also the sun has just moved into Scorpio and Jupiter is going to be there for 13 months. So here there may be this resonation or an expansion of these insecurities and fears. And when we're looking at the archetype, the archetype is saying you need to deal with them head on. If, for example, the nodes are involved in this lineup of Pluto and or Venus and or Mars, here, with the nodes involved, the behavior, the patterns that show up in relationships gives an indication that these are historical, ancestral, um, have been going on for centuries in your lifetimes. And actually, when you're in a union where you're getting these insecurities, you know, the very Scorpionic theme showing up, in this lifetime, the couple is invited to think about how can they jettison, how can they rise above these karmic ways of being that they need to cut the ties with the past, because actually, this destructive behaviour within your relationship is just not feeding you. And it is a sense of transformation and um, releasing that negativity. If we think of a symbol that's associated with Scorpio, with Scorpio um, it's, it's a symbol of the snake, the Euborus, uh, where the snake is eating its own tail. And so here again, it's this invitation for transformation. How does one actually go about transforming their lives in meaningful ways? And Scorpio um, is, is opposite Taurus and so we have another axis and this axis is about enlightenment because we have the Pleiades constellation that rises in Taurus and sets in Scorpio so here is the call again how does one become enlightened and the way in which to do this is to find ways to integrate light and dark consciousness the unconscious how do you bring um, these aspects these characteristics these ways of being so that you're living in a far more integrated way so therefore you're not out of balance and so therefore you're not being overtaken by these compulsive behaviors that can show up in the murky scorpion waters so when we're looking at scorpio you're always looking at Mars and Pluto and this connection, you know, is Venus involved? Are the nodes involved? What level are you actually operating at? And what you're looking at with, with Taurus, Taurus is about um, security and love and pleasure. And whereas Scorpio is about challenging the fears that need to be um, tackled with, in a deeply profound way in order for you to gain the blessings because when we're looking at Mars, sorry, when we're looking at Taurus, Taurus is associated with the sense of value and meaning. But you can't derive value and meaning if Scorpio hasn't plunged in to cut the ties, to do the work, to clear the debris in order for you to live in a far more conscious and heightened way. 
So that's what I wanted to share with you in this part one of this um, archetypal series, looking at Scorpio and what does it mean? How can you start to plunge into the depths of Scorpio so that you're living far more uh, liberated? And because we've got Jupiter in Scorpio, anything that's buried, any insecurities, any fears and doubts will only get heightened because whatever Jupiter touches, it, it will expand it. So that's it. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode, part two of the Scorpio archetype. So beautiful people, put your comments and, and questions and anything that you've got going on in your mind, put them in the comment box below. You know I always love to connect with you. Feel free to share and spread the word about the Archetypal Sun Sign series that I'm moving into. And I will see you again on the next episode. Until then, take care. Bye.